holding on to the chance for those moderate to even upwards of heavy pockets of rain. Anywhere you see those yellows, oranges, even reds. Lakeshore flood advisories remain in place, so continued problems with the inland flooding, erosion, and things like that. Sanford and Edenville residents, you are urged to evacuate immediately. Midland, Edenville, Sanford, and other communities after the Edenville and Sanford dams fail. Leave now, water's coming. It's scary. This is pretty unreal. Experts are describing this as a 500 year event. Um, we have never been through an event such as we're experiencing today. One thing that I have never seen before. We've had multiple calls. We've had three evacuations, uh, down lines. This is the whopper of all whoppers. It was unbelievable. We, I mean, honestly, think it would happen to us here. Because it's devastating. Whatever we can do to help is what it's all about. Seeing neighbor helping neighbor. That we're going to come back from this, but uh, we can't do it alone. Well, we built so many different emotions, I can't even explain it. I'm sad, I'm mad, I'm lost, I feel lost. Those images still fresh on the minds of so many two years later. The catastrophic dam failures led to flooding, destroyed homes and businesses, left lakes and canals dry, and now the final report reveals it all could have been prevented. Thank you for joining us for this special program, Rising from the Floods. I'm David Custer. And I'm Meg McLeod. We are coming to you tonight from the Sanford Dam. May 19th, 2020 resulted in one of the worst man-made disasters this state has ever seen. And now a 500-page report details the decades of failures that led to the demise of the Edenville and Sanford Dams. A team of forensic engineers reports both human and physical factors are to blame, but the team didn't single out one individual or organization. The report says the overall system for financing, designing, building, operating, and upgrading the dams fell short. So I think it's uh, difficult to comprehend how something as important as a state dam might slip through the cracks. The report calls the Edenville Dam problematic from the get-go. It cites inconsistent design plans and specifications when it was built. The team concluded a series of errors and miscalculations over the course of nearly 100 years all contributed to the end result. When you see what happened here, it seemed like a switch just turned on. A switch that turned flooded streets into a flood of momentum across the greater Sanford area. While the dam failures unleash devastation, business owners are working to rebuild and restore a sense of community. All right, let's see where you're at. Not long ago, Devin Stark opened the door to her own salon just around the corner from downtown Sanford. February 23rd was our first day. Since then, she's been concocting just the right recipe for success. I actually worked in the same building five years ago. It's probably doubled in, in business. It's hard to believe for the Sanford native just two years after the devastating dam failures. I didn't even think there would be a Sanford after that with how bad it looked down here. It was bad. And seeing how it is now, it's an amazing comeback. The community rallied together and, and made this all happen. Village Councilman Carl Hammond says the infectious spirit of neighbors helping neighbors is what dug Sanford out of its darkest day. If you look around through the village, everything that you see was about seven foot underwater. May 19th, 2020 may have washed away what Sanford once was, but residents could never have imagined the flood of new business that would follow. Plans are rolling in for a Big B coffee at Sanford Food Center, a cannabis dispensary, an ice cream parlor, a bicycle repair shop, a shoe repair shop, and more. And that's not to mention all those that have already rebuilt, like the place for people to rebuild themselves. Bend your knees. In downtown, I'm up halfway. the studio is reaching Take residents left hand up to the in a new way. I had my doubts in the beginning that a yoga studio would have any interest. I was totally wrong there. Lots of interest. I mean, we have people that have said they think God brought them here. When you get that kind of feedback, it's very humbling. Owners Lon and Debbie say the studio has become a place for people to come together while giving yoga and dance a spin. And they know they're looking out 
at only the beginning of Sanford's extraordinary rebirth. It's the phoenix rising. It's really come into its own. For Devin, she's now seeing her hometown's future in full color. I honestly thought it was going to be the end of Sanford. And I mean, in a way it was because it's, it didn't go back to how it was before. It's so much better. That's the, the, the positive. That everybody is just changed. And it's that reinvigorated community spirit that's made Sanford strong. It's so terrible to say that you got to have a catastrophe to rebuild. You know, it's kind of like you got to have winter before the spring. And that's where we're at now. It's, the, the spring's coming. Sanford isn't the only place where the community has rallied around its small businesses. Right before the flood, David Kreiderman had just started working on upgrades at the Hook Party Store and Bait Shop in Hope near Wixom Lake. I just put a new seawall in, all new docks, got that all reworked and everything, and then, then we lost the water. And that meant he also lost a crucial piece of his customer base, boaters. But Kreiderman says as he waits for the water to come back, his community has kept him going. Thanks to the locals, have been, they've been very supportive. It's slow, but uh, it, they, a lot of people are standing behind me. You know, they appreciate me being open and you know, we we'll do the best we can keeping the lights on. Kreiderman says the support has been humbling. That sense of community is changing people's lives along the banks of Wixom Lake. The flooding of their neighborhoods, followed by the draining of the lake, forced neighbors to not only meet for the first time, but they're forming lifelong friendships as they navigate the disaster together. A red-winged blackbird seeks out a swampy area in late spring to nest. Two years ago, this wetland wouldn't have been an ideal spot. Our home was on a beautiful canal. Today, it is... Not so beautiful. Weeds, mud, small puddles of water, the landscape of the Venice Subdivision Canal in Gladwin County. Once a picture-perfect snapshot of a Michigan summer, a pathway to Wixom Lake. We'd love to have it back. Tammy and Bob O'Donnell will never forget May 19th, 2020. Water began surrounding their vacation home. They made it out before the M30 bridge disappeared beneath the surface. But just as fast as the water came in, it quickly flowed out when the Edenville Dam failed, as if someone pulled the plug. We came back up by 11 the next morning and the devastation was, uh, I, I, it gives me goosebumps to this day. But every bit of this was on basically on our deck. But something more noticeable than the logs washed up that day and unlike the debris, it's not being tossed out. People just came out of their homes open armed and say, what can I do? What can I help with? What? It was amazing. Neighbors who once only waved to each other in passing, now sharing a common bond birthed out of disaster. At the time, it seemed like COVID went away for like a quick second. It's like neighbors were hugging. We were making trips back and forth all morning. Everybody was, the neighbors were helping us. We know our immediate neighbors, but that night, neighbors up the road had a nice dinner for us and we had a nice shower to, to relax to. It's just little efforts. It's all it takes and to help a neighbor that's, you know, lost things and clean up their property. Purpose flowed right into the hearts of this newly discovered community, a community built by fellow comrades rising from the flood, choosing to make a permanent nest. We had great fishing, swimming, boating. We had everything. As they wait for the season, that'll bring the water back home. Basically, since the flood, we have been here full time. In July, we made the move to make this our full-time residence and never look back. And eventually, I want to move up here permanently. We live in Midland right now, but I want to move up here with my wife and enjoy whenever it comes back. We're very thankful for what we have. We don't want anyone to feel sorry for us in any way because we feel truly blessed. Many of the neighbors we talked with are members of the Wixom Lake Association, a nonprofit organization helping residents around the lake rebuild. Its president, Doug Hill, says it started as a social community but has blossomed into so much more in the last two years. So we've been spending a lot of our funds and our, our efforts into trying to make sure that they, you know, we become a resource for them. And then the visionary part of this is what do we want to look like after all of this you know, comes unfold. How do we want to keep the community spirit that we've built here? 
Hill describes the group as a grassroots effort and a rock for people to cling to as they tackle the recent challenges. I feel a personal desire to keep capturing these moments, documenting this for history. And that inspired Jordan Mowbray to grab a drone and start documenting the destruction. Over the last two years, he's posted regular reports from the dams. He's even set up 24-7 live cams, causing him to build quite the following online. When the dams failed, I think it was at about 5,000 subscribers. Now it's up to about 33,000 subscribers. But I was really surprised at how much national and world audience there is, too. We have people from Sweden, uh, Norway. If you'd like to check out Jordan's latest updates, we have a link in the hot link section on WNEF.com. Well, it'll cost millions to rebuild the dams and restore the lakes, but where will the money come from? We'll tell you how much of that money could be coming from property owners living on and close to the lakes coming up. And the floods left many people searching for answers and wondering what to do next. We'll talk to people looking at the positives as the area bands together to bring back lake life. That's next. Plus. Singing her heart out for her hometown. We'll sit down with the lead singer of a popular 80s cover band using her voice to raise money for Wixom Lake.